Welcome to basic power system analysis using PSSC. Now that we have learned about the basics of power system analysis and how we can model on the, uh, any network for the load flow analysis, we know about all the parameters like the transmission line and the generator and the per unit. Now it is time for us to move on to the software itself. So here, this is the main window of uh, PSSC version 32. You can open this software by simply going to start and find PSSC or you can find it from the desktop icon because when you install PSSC you're going to get a desktop icon of PSSC version 32 just double click on it and this window is going to open so let me just give you an overview of the window in this window the uh, important things are like this this is the main menu bar and these are different type of toolbars in it this is the standard toolbar with open and new file and save options similarly these are all the other options which we use in pssc now how you can put more to toolbars in pssc this is simple you will just right click once you right click you are going to see different toolbars you can just check or uncheck whatever kind of toolbar you need similarly this this is the main working space here whatever you are going to model uh, in your system this will come here in the main space this this side is the tree view and the tree view is going to tell you how much equipment you have modeled in the form of bus machine load every kind of uh, PSSC model you are going to have is going to come here on this side Similarly, it has different tool, uh, different menus also. For instance, if you want to perform optimum power flow, every data related to optimum power flow will come here. Similarly, for dynamics, it will come here. The uh, dynamic models, different dynamic models when you are going to use for the power system stability, you can find them here or you can access them from here. Similarly, if you want to plot on these dynamic models, it will be available here. So moving on now. Since we are using load flow analysis, we are going to perform load flow analysis using PSSC. So we are going to use, uh, keep this network tree view open with us. Here, this is the progress window. What is going, uh, progress window going to tell us? The progress window is going to tell us each and every progress uh, happening in the PSCC. For instance, if you open a new case, it is going to tell you about the brief summary of this uh, case. Similarly, everything you are modeling something it is going to give you a progress here from this progress window you can know that what is going on in the power system if there is some problem uh, while modeling the system everything is going to be displayed here similarly if you have some alerts or warning it are going to come these are going to come here so this is the overall uh, view of the PSSC let's see if you want to open a base case a PSSC has provided you with several uh, Examples. You can open these examples by going to file and then to open. And other option to open these files is you just go to this open. So once I click this open, you see PSSC directly opens the window with the example. So let us uh, select an example from here. A simple example is this SAV.NW. So let me explain you what is uh, this SAV and um, the other extension system. In PSSC, this extension system is very important. Why? Because PSSC is like a plug and play software. By plug and play, I mean that you have different kinds of uh, files for different kind of solutions. For instance, you are trying to perform load flow analysis. You will require a main database. So everything in the database is going to be saved in the form of SAV file. Similarly, if you are going to build some SLD for this uh, safe case, this is going to be in the form of SLD file given here. Similarly, another important file is the sequence file. So when we are going to perform short circuit analysis, we will be using the sequence file. When we are going to perform transient stability analysis, we are going to use this diary file or the snapshot file. Similarly, if we, uh, we, if we want to transfer this data 
into an other software we want to import PSSC data into an other software we are going to convert this file into raw file or similarly if we have the uh, some power system case available in some other software like Dixieland or eTap we can import this into PSSC with the help of this raw file because all these softwares have the capability to transfer their load model this power system model into raw form so let us select SAV file and open it there you go this is like an excel sheet so if you have uh, some experience with excel this is not going to be difficult for you for each uh, equipment you have a certain tab so you have a bus tab then you have a plant tab you then you have a machine tab then you have loads then you have fixtures then switch shunts branches breakers two winding transformer three winding transformer impedance table for the transformers the fact devices two terminal dc voltage source dc multi-terminal dc area inter a inter area change and so on the owners the zones multi-section lines so everything is available here so whatever you are going to model in pssc this is going to be reflected in one of these tabs so let us go to bus tab here you see in pssc this bus number is very important why because pssc remembers each substation or each bus by its number only not by the name for any bus you can have similar name but similar if you have similar bus number pssc is not going to accept it then for your convenience the bus numbers are difficult to remember or it will be difficult for you but the names are easier to remember so for your convenience pssc has provided you with this bus name tab also you whatever bus you are modeling you can give a certain name to it then you have to provide the base voltages remember we talked about base voltages so the same uh, base voltages the voltages level at different uh, uh, voltages level we are going to give here for a different kind of buses then this uh, if we are pre uh, performing uh, load flow maybe the area belong to different uh, each bus or the substation belong to different area different zone or a different owner so we can give that also this code i am going to discuss this code in a while then there is the voltage which is calculated by pssc then this is the angle the same sine delta calculated by pssc and if you go to the machine so the basic data of machine is the base number the id you can have multiple uh, machines on a certain bus or for instance if you have a certain power plant usually power plant have more than one machines so each machine you can model here and when PHSC is going to see it as a plant it is going to give you in the form of a plant so for the each machine you have different uh, type of data which you can model for instance what is the dispatch of each uh, generator its maximum limit its minimum limit its reactive maximum reactive power and minimum reactive power see this is the same thing which we discussed uh, in our reactive power capability this maximum and uh, minimum reactive power this is going to come from here this is this is the maximum reactive power this is the minimum reactive power so these two values we are going to get from the generator capability curve even if we do not know about the capability curve we can assume some values so it is not a problem that if you do not have these values uh, you cannot model it it is easy to model them similarly this base we discussed about this the MVA base this is the MVA rating of the generator we can model it here and these are the source values R source and X source these values we discussed in the very first lecture that when we are modeling a certain power system we can we have to give its values these values are very important when it comes to short circuit so even if you do not model them for the load flow analysis nothing will happen but when you are performing the short circuit analysis these values become very important so let's talk about load now this is the load in the load same thing you have the bus name bus number and the id because on a certain bus or on a one bus you can have multiple loads similarly uh, this load it belongs 
it can belong to different areas it can belong to different zones it can belong to different owners you can give it in service and out of service option will provide you that this load should be considered in the system while performing analysis or not scalable means that once you have this load can you uh, scale it up or down so you can change the load values you know that your uh, load in a power system the load does not remain the same so if you are going to the next state maybe the value is different the load value is different so uh, you can adjust the value of the load by simply scaling it up or down so whichever value you are going to consider as scalable it is going to be uh, increased or decreased other values with this option unchecked will not be used then you have this active and reactive power. So you have to give the load in the form of active power and the reactive power. So let me open uh, one more thing on this so it becomes easy. Uh, in the next lecture, we are going to discuss how to model these things. So don't worry, we are going to move towards this. So let's open the SLD file for this. So once again, I am going to go on to the open. From this option, I'm going to select slide rebindary file and for the same, save new dot sld once i double click on this there you go so this is so the every data which we gave in this uh, uh, save file is going to be reflected on this sld as well now how to switch between save file and this sld file you simply have to use control and tab once you press control tab see you move to your save file and again when you uh, press control tab we are back to sld file so let us see what kind of data we have in generator so if you do not want to model your data from here if you think that it is very difficult to model the data here what we can do is we can model it from sld file so here if we i double click on this generator sorry there you go you see you have two top tabs one for the power flow one for the short circuit since we are interested in power flow right now so we are going to consider this option so there all the values which we had in the save file are reflected here the pmax the pmin the qmax the qmin this qgen this is uh, going to be calculated by the load flow software so we should not be concerned about this the mva base the R source, the X source, similarly the transformer data because in PSSC there are two ways to model your uh, uh, generator step up transformer. Either you can model it separately, for instance, which has happened in this case, this is known as the explicit modeling. But if you do not want to model your uh, generator transformer as a separate, you can model it internally. Why we want to model it internally? Because we are interested in the impedance of the transformer because when we are going to perform short circuit analysis we are going to consider each and every impedance in the system so that is why we require this so in this case if even if you do not provide it no problem so when you are uh, when you will be modeling this uh, renewable uh, energy generators like wind turbine or solar pv plants then we can use this mode but at present we are since we are considering the conventional generator so we are going to use this similarly if i double click on transformer here there you go same power flow data short circuit data we are interested in power flow data so here is the power flow data our concern is with specified r and x these two are important for us similarly the other thing important is that we discussed in load flow analysis we need to adjust the tap so tap can be adjusted here here the tap is given in the form of per unit so suppose this is the principal tab so if you want to move up the tab or down the tab you simply have to change this value similarly this is the winding mva you can consider this as the base mva this is the base mva and rate a rate b and rate c basically these are the values of the thermal rating you know for a transformer on any transmission line you can model different kind of rating so this will be easier easier for you when you are performing you have performed the analysis and you are checking the result if you want to check okay my thermal limit is let's suppose 100 percent so you can give 
100%. In emergency condition, your uh, line can go up to 120%. So what you can do is, uh, you can model the rate P as 120% of the normal uh, capacity. Similarly, rate C, let's suppose, can be the emergency rating, the uh, maximum possible rating which can, uh, which can go. For instance, if it is 150%, so you can give the value of 150% here. 150% of the MBA. So you are going to put here actual MBA multiplied by 150% or 0.5. So this is how uh, we are going to model the transformer. Similarly, transmission line, if you double click on the transmission line, there you go. Same power flow data, short circuit data for the power flow data. What you require is this will be filled automatically. When you will model the transmission line through SLD, this will be uh, filled automatically what we require is the line r line x and charging we have discussed this thing these two are the series component and this is the shunt co component of the line same with the rate a rate b and rate c you are going to give the rating the mva capacity of the line similarly if the length of the line this length of the line in pssc PSSC will not uh, convert your per kilometer length into the total length by multiplying with this factor you have to do it manually just for your reference you can give the length value here if you do not give anything here nothing will happen this is only for you to know that how much load is going to be how much is the length of the line for your reference only this has nothing to do with the calculation similarly you know that in high extra high voltage transmission lines this due to line charging your voltages at the sending end uh, and the receiving end can increase drastically especially when the line is lightly loaded remember when we discussed about surge impedance loading when the load is below surge impedance loading your transmission line will be generating some reactive power so if you want to consume this reactive power what we can do is we can put shunt reactor here so the value of the shunt reactor in the form of per unit will go here for instance if we have 100 mva as base and we want to put a 120 megawatt shunt reactor what we can do is we can simply put minus 1.2 minus means reactance we are putting a reactor if it had been positive it means we are putting a capacitor so we want to put a reactor we put minus here similarly 1.2 multiplied by base mva which is 100 will become 120 mva so this is for the line from end from hand here means from bus so reactor is modeled on the from bus but if you want to model at the two bus two bus means on the other side also so if you do not give value nothing will be modeled here if you give some value the same rating shunt reactor will be modeled here so that is all uh, uh, for the basic overview of PSSC. In next lecture, we are going to prepare a case from the scratch. That is all for today. Thank you.